speed painting tutorial. <laughs> Bits. <laughs> Welcome back, hobby maniacs. I'm Rob Bear from spikybits.com, and in this video, well, this is an intro for two almost identical tutorial videos here on the channel one on how to speed paint a space marine, and one how to speed paint Marvel Crisis Protocol uh, miniatures, which you can use for pretty much anything out there, whether it needs a little bit of uh, pre shading work with pouches, metals, and things like that, or if you just ready to go with the speed paint because there is no additional base coating needed in the case of Marvel Crisis Protocol. Now, I do want to mention, because there has been a little, we'll call it a kerfuffle out there on the internet about speed paint and about how it's so terrible. Oh no, it's terrible. It's actually not terrible. Speed paint is a one coat solution, y'all. So doing multiple coats is not only silly, but expensive because you don't need to buy this to do multiple coats when you already have acrylic paint. You need to allow significant time as Goober Town Hobbies video showed folks six to eight hours between coats. If you want to do coats, uh, additional coats of speed paint, you don't need to. It's a one coat solution, y'all. Hit it up, you're done. Let it dry, you're good. Like. That's the whole point to speed paint, not to sit around and wait six to eight hours. Once it's dry, matte coat it, put it on the table and have some fun because that's what it's all about is getting your miniatures on the table faster. Now, these two techniques uh, combine something called values highlighting, which is super simple, but you can just fast forward to just the speed painting part if that's your thing, because you can just simply matte coat or base coat this stuff with a can of army painter white or bone or gray or whatever color tickles your hobby pickle and then once it's dry of course you know it's primary you need to let it dry hit it with the speed paint and you're done but this technique that a lot of people are asking about in our original kind of army painter initial review of the speed paint a lot of folks asked hey how do you get that cool look on your Marvel Crisis Protocol figures and on, you know, uh, can you do it with uh, Space Marines and stuff? And how does how does this paint look over metals? And I'm going to show you all that, but do yourself a favor and also watch the Goober Town Hobbies video because he shows you what all of these colors look like, again, over um, different types of primer coats and also metals as well. And he does a whole lot of work on that. It's an amazing video. I can't even imagine how long it took him to do, but that is definitely worth checking out as well. So let's jump into it. I don't know which video you clicked on but we're about to jump into the tutorial right now okay so the first step in this process uh, if you've watched our MCP video on how to paint uh, some Marvel Crisis Protocol figures or it might not even be out yet I don't even know at this point I'm just making content <laughs> but I'm gonna talk about what we use to base coat uh, this particular model here so I'm pretty fond of using white ink but I've also used this Cadre Gray uh, air paint from War paint, uh, from uh, Army Painter, and I've also used uh, Monument Hobbies Pro Acrylic, which is really good, uh, good solid white. You just have to thin down those paints a little bit more and kind of cut back on the pressure a bit, uh, because otherwise you're going to get a lot of splatter. And I just I, I, I like to go full throttle a little bit sometimes, so um, that that really doesn't work for me. Now I know what you're thinking, hey Rob, I don't have an airbrush. I'm tired of all this airbrushing. I don't want to spend that however many dollars to buy an airbrush, learn an airbrush. Blah, 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 blah. Well, one, I would like to respectfully ask you to reconsider because there are so many resources out there on the internet to show you how to airbrush uh, this channel, Next Little Paintings channel, and all sorts of other artists out there that are just all incredible. Um, Jack Plus Painting, uh, Hellfire Hobbies, uh, Impending Duff, you know, just to name a few right off the bat. You know, of course, you got all the masterclass painters, guys, and all that stuff. There, there's so many resources out there. It's it's very easy to do, and a lot of them, if you reach out to them, you have a specific question, you can hit them up. You can always hit me up about a question on Facebook. I generally look at my messenger pretty frequently. So, uh, that being said, you don't have to uh, use an airbrush. You can just dry brush. Use a heavy dry brush for the very first step on your mini, just like this. And that's basically all you need to get going uh, up to this point. So, we'll pick back up in the tutorial here in a few minutes uh, at that point. But for now, we're gonna take a little bit of this and mix it into our airbrush to get ready for the first step. The second biggest question I have when it comes to airbrushing is, hey, how much paint do I put in there? So you can see there's a little bit of flow improver in there. 
And then you've got this recess nub on this HS, uh, uh, what is this? Uh, uh, Evolution, Infinity rather. And that's basically where I fill my paint up to. So I'm going to put a couple drops of this DW white ink in here, and it's going to. Whoop. That's nah, probably good. So what I wanted to do was get up to that little nub, but I put a little too much in there, but that's okay. This stuff, you could actually probably base coat the majority of an army, believe it or not. Probably, I want to say at least 20 minutes. We'll, we'll, say, we'll go with 20 minutes because it's crazy how the ink actually lasts a lot longer than actual paint, um, but it, it surely does, and it's just kind of nuts. So for this, we don't have to necessarily worry about the base, and again, you know, we've talked about Zenithal in, in the past, and I'm sure you've heard a lot of that, and that's just basically top down. Some people hit it at the 45. We do want top down. We do want to go, you know, pretty heavy uh, going top down because you do need to make that contrast, and no, not the contrast paint, you, the difference between light and dark. So when you look down, this is basically where, you know, all of your highlights and all of your um, light is gonna hit. And we'll continue down the miniature and just doing that basically is where the light would hit first off. Now this isn't by any means what we're gonna do for the whole thing, but that is a great start. Now, what we really wanna do is, is still not hit some of these parts specifically, but we want to make sure that we hit the areas that are gonna be uh, very noticeable, like these round parts or like anything on the shoulder pads, the helmet, you know, if this was a bare head, we would hit that pretty strong. The hands, any any places there's a lot of action and focus for the eye, we want to hit, right? Um, and then going up on uh, the, what is it? The kind of, I guess this is like the greaves. Kind of what we want to do is hit more in the center and kind of leave the sides darker. Um, it's just a personal preference of mine. So we're just gonna go something like that and Mm, this pouch because that's going to be a brown but for the most part I think we've hit everything we want to hit right there so you can see there's a nice solid progression between light and dark and then from the bottom it's still dark from the top it's still light so that's your kind of your zenithal with a little plus and that plus is some extra paint because the speed paint is going to need something to stick to I went back and I touched it up just a little bit and here's kind of the result. Now the next step is some cutbacks. And we talk about cutbacks, any video you listen to, it's, you're gonna hear about cutbacks, totally optional. You can go from this step to the next step of dry brushing and then apply your speed paints and you, you'll still be fine. But if you really wanna make that extra, extra, extra pop, you kinda owe it to yourself to take, especially if you're doing batch paint, just take an extra like minute or two and just come in, load up some black, like I used the, the Army Painter Air Black right here and loaded it up to the nub. I put one little drop of flow improver because I'm just particular like that. You don't have to put any flow improver in with the Army Painter stuff. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna cut back some of these areas, make them a little bit more pronounced that I might've got a little white, a little, little too much with the white in here and just kind of touch things up a bit. And that's kind of what's gonna give it that extra pop and really give you that, that that wow factor on the tabletop once you get uh, the speed paint on here you can kind of see it's already really starting to be like that very crisp contra contrast and we haven't really done much to be quite honest which is just literally our minds playing tricks on us with the difference between white and black but just a very well pronounced kind of white and, and black at this point. So I'm gonna tight, tighten this up a little bit and come back and we'll do the very next step. Now here's the result of all the cutbacks and I actually matte coated this and let it set overnight because it's super important that you get a matte coat on here and you seal in your airbrush work because otherwise once you start using washes and speed paints and all these other things, you could tear back some of your airbrush work if you're not careful. It's not its not a primer coat. It hasn't bonded at the molecular level at this point, right, on your miniatures. Now, what I use currently is really hard to find. I use this uh, Tester's uh, Dull Coat um, Spray Lacquer. This stuff's really great. Unfortunately, it went out of print. They just started reprinting it again, thank God. It's been like three years. 
Um, you can find it now. There's a dull coat version of it, and there's a gloss coat version of it. And the only difference is what it says right there on this cap. So if you lose the cap, you might not know. So what I recommend doing sometimes is put a G on the bottom, so that way you know if you have gloss coat or a matte or a dull coat. And gloss coat's great if you know you're going to go into doing a wash. I personally just been using dull coat on this. If you can't find the stuff, the Tamiya. Um, uh, spray uh, sealer is also pretty good. It's this stuff here. It's a clear coat as well. Uh, you can get this at most hobby towns and uh, hobby lobbies and things like that. So a little bit more available currently until you know all the tester stuff starts hitting stores. So now that we've let this sit overnight and make sure you give it plenty of time to dry. Always give everything plenty of time to dry. Like we've said that a million times at this point. Um, we're going to get in here. And we're going to block in some of the metals because even though we're using speed paint, we still need to do some uh, the black speed paint over the metal area. And that's where this takes a little bit longer to do um, than some of the other uh, stuff. Because if you're getting in here and you're blocking out uh, some of the metals, you know, that's actually slowing you down. Like at this point, we could just hit it with speed paint and we'd pretty much be done with our one coat. But because this is on here and we need to get in here we need to hit this we need to hit this like this little guy right here um all these little vents on the back maybe the grills in there too uh anything that if there was a grenade or something like that we would need to hit that uh, i think we're gonna go back and hit this casing with some black and then just have it like you're pretty much stand oh and we'll probably hit the trim with some gold or maybe like a bronze uh, to get them ready for the ultramarine status, I suppose. So we'll do a little bit of that brushwork. Now you might want to might, might want to keep this in mind too. I'm using a synthetic brush uh, from Monument Hobbies. I like using synthetic when I'm laying down base coats and things. I think I think synthetic's a little bit better because it's a little it, you know it keeps the tip a little bit longer. It's a little bit stronger. It's got a bit more snap to it. Some people like using their their uh, their normal natural you know pro sables. I like using those too. But mostly when I'm laying down like big splotchy base coats using wash, which we're going to do or speed paint, which we're going to do here in a minute. So that's my personal preference is uh, synthetic for highlights and base coats and things, you know, smaller, more detailed base coats. We don't want to get too sloppy and the natural hair like your sables and, you know, all that stuff for uh, doing washes and glazes and, and larger surface area type work. This actually is, besides waiting for stuff to dry, is actually the longest time consuming part. You know, getting in here with, with your brush to do all these areas, going back black, tightening it up, hitting the edges here with the with the bronze, uh, hitting all these areas with metal. I forgot to do the vents, that's okay. It'll hardly be noticeable, but now we are ready. Um, well, we're actually not ready for speed paint. We're gonna do our glaze, believe it or not. So what the glaze is gonna do is that is gonna get us um, to make the really, really fine contrast style where it gets into all the cracks. Everything now is gonna have that pop and that depth. And that's why we did this base coat first because not only will it have you know the black glaze or the black wash over top of it, but this will also be ready for speed paint too. And it'll, you know, it will automatically kind of pop it even more with its highlights and its low lights, which is really, really cool. So we're going to do that. Um, let me get the mix all set up and I'll show you. So this isn't really anything new that you've, you haven't seen on this channel if you've been watching for a while. So we're just going to take some dark tone here. Uh, this is the Army Painter, basically the black wash um, that they put out or your null oil, whatever you want to say. Ah, is that enough? That might be enough. Now the key is here. Um, we've already we've already matte coated this, and then we just did some acrylic highlights over top of it. The key is to always, of course, let your paints dry. So if you know that your acrylic paint is dry over top of that, um, acrylics dry pretty quick. You know, maybe give it 10, 15, 30 minutes. I'm not too worried about doing a wash over top of this right now because it's been about that last time with me going to grab a stack and things like that. So this isn't we're not super clock running here at this point. I'm gonna add uh, a little bit of our flow improver and uh, glazing medium mix. So this is 50-50 of glaze, a Liquitex glazing medium, which you can get a big bottle for like 15 bucks overpriced at Hobby Lobby. Um, and our flow improver from our airbrush, airbrush flow improver. So that's a 50-50 mix in this little bottle and we're gonna squeeze out about that much right there and make some chocolate milk. It's, it's not really chocolate milk, but it'll look like chocolate milk here in a second. So we're gonna mix this up. It's gonna give us our glaze. 
or a wash. It's more of a wash, I guess, at this point. And the cool thing about this, because it is a glazing medium, you see how it's a little bit, it's not quite as dark. I'm gonna put a little bit more drop of this in here. What this is gonna do for us is very similar to what speed paint does in general, although that has um, a different additive in it, is this is gonna spread out, it's gonna get in on all the cracks, it's gonna create that depth um, it's basic. We're basically making a. Uh, it's called like values highlighting. I believe I kind of stumbled upon it. Kenny uh, from Next Level Painting. He's like, oh, that's values highlighting. Apparently, it's a traditional art technique that I had no idea about. But I was like, oh, okay. Well, that explains it. So we're gonna get a bunch on a brush. And again, I'm using the natural hair brush at this point because the bristles are so big and 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 poofy and depthy that they're gonna really um, allow you to soak up a lot of that liquid and not get in here starting at the top and working our way down. We're just gonna spread out all that glaze so that it covers everything. It gets in there and it creates that, that last or that first level of depth over top of the airbrush work uh, that's really gonna allow us or allow the speed paint to really do crazy stuff right now. Because remember, speed paint's gonna spread out it's gonna get in the de it's gonna get into cracks. It's gonna create depth. It gets lighter. It gets darker depending on if it's on a, a raised surface or a um, you know a depth or a, a you know just like a crack or something like that. Uh, to speed because of its resin additive, it's it's kind of crazy. It's kind of revolutionary, and it's you know they designed it to do exactly what it what it does. It's a one. It's literally a one coat solution, right? So, you know, this is what you do. You coat your model in speed paint. This isn't speed paint yet, but it's gonna spread out and it's gonna get in all those areas and it's gonna create a lighter version of itself and a darker version of, its, of itself across all those areas here. So, and this is pretty easy. This didn't take like no time at all. I, I talked way more than I probably should have, but I just kind of wanted to show you doing the whole thing here. Um, now that I've coated the whole miniature, super easy right uh we are gonna get in here and look for globs so or glip globs and cling on so you see all this all this bubbles and all this this stuff here what you want to do is just rinse your brush out and if you see anything too crazy like this probably isn't that bad but i'm just gonna i'm just gonna dab it real quick it's not a big deal and i'm just gonna kind of look back here because i was really kind of painting this through through the view screen here or through the uh, computer monitor and that all looks pretty well spread out from that. Oh, I missed the back of the bolter. So now that we've got all that, we're gonna, if you're doing a assembly line technique, you just grab the next one and keep on going, right? If you're doing a whole squad of Marines. But since this is kind of our only one, we're gonna have to let this little dude dry a bit. Um, so you can put them under a fan or just let them dry at uh, room temperature. I would definitely not do that. I would use a fan if you're just trying to paint one little thing. Uh, and we'll be back in a few. This is what your miniature is gonna look like after it has been washed or with, glazed with that stuff right there. Now, if you want it to look crisper, you can do a dry brush before you do that step and that all of these areas will be a lot crisper uh, as well and you'll have all that super like edge spots. But the, you know, the, the wash, the glaze, it does a lot of that work for you and gets you ready for the speed paint. Speaking of speed paint, it doesn't take too long to let all that dry. And you can see it has created all the depth and all the values and everything to really let speed paint do the work. So we're gonna start out with magic blue speed paint. I think that's the I think that's the one. I think that's what it, where we're uh, where we're at on that. So I squeeze a little bit of that out. Now I am using a uh, synthetic brush here, the uh, larger one, and it's. Well, this is a size, this is size two, uh, because what I wanna do is I, I don't want to, I don't wanna get too crazy because unfortunately they're Marines and there's a lot of detail here. Like we got some pouches, we're gonna have to do brown, um, a purity seal here. I guess that's really it. Yeah, so, but we don't, oh, and then these probably need, the joints uh, need to be like darker, like the black. And then we use black again on all the metals and everything. But I don't want to go too crazy, so I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it nice and simple. The cool thing about speed paint is you really don't have to. I got a lot on my brush there. I didn't realize it. Uh, you really don't have to do a whole lot of work with this stuff. Like you literally just put it on your brush, just like you would treat it. Here, let's do this. 
have something to rinse off a little bit on. And as long as you have, just maintain your, your simple, normal brush control kind of standards. You don't want to load up on your brush or anything like that, and then you just paint it on. It's literally that easy. So we'll just start up here at the at the grave. Need a little bit more. You don't want to dilute it. Uh, it does not look good diluted. There we go. Okay, so we got enough on it now. And just kind of smooth it out. And the the speed paint itself, it's going to take a hot minute to dry. Always let everything dry, um, especially before you matte coat it, because the resin additives and things in here is just going to spread out and going to continue to spread out uh, across the model, across the surface, and everything for for a hot minute. Um, so you don't you don't have to glob it on. You don't have to get all crazy like that. Just maintain. Just act like your base coat in it. Just just a normal paint base coat. Super easy uh, to do. And if you mess up, you're like, oh crap, I messed up. The cool thing about this is it will eventually dry to where you can't do this, but it will stay. You can just be like, oh crap, that wasn't supposed to, that's gonna be a purity seal. Well, as long as you matte coated, you can just rub that right off and fix it and do it a different color if you really need to. Now, I'm doing this through the computer screen, so it's still a little bit of blue on there, but you get the idea. Now, a lot of folks, like we said, they're like, hey, this stuff reactivates, you know, watch out for it. Well, that's, that's true, but that's actually good I guess in a way, because if you make a mistake, you can fix it. However, I don't know why you would want to do another coat of paint over top of this. If you're doing multiple layers of paint, use acrylic paint like we talked about. Don't use speed paint. This is meant to be a one coat solution. So we will do blue over the rest of this. Then we'll figure out, we'll get us a bone color, we'll get us a brown color, um, maybe red for the eyeballs, I'm not sure yet. And do some black on the metal here uh, to show you how that looks as well. So here is the finished product about 10 minutes or so later, give or take. Uh, finish it off with a Gamer's Grass, um, I forget which base this is, Highland? I wanna say it's Highland base. Uh, and I think it, that really uh, helps it pop right there. So you can see by doing the, the values and having those, those low spots and those high spots, you get that really cool variation with absolutely no work. And then all of the lines are super crisp because you know we did the, uh, uh, the dry brushing and things like that. So none of that is actually done. The only thing the brush actually touched besides the, you know, <laughs> the speed paint and the glaze was the metal areas here, the black and the, the gold and things. Now I painted this separately, you know, to make, to make this uh, worth the time and to get it all done and to check my, my uh, recipe, I had already pre-painted this guy, but I can tell you that, uh, so his eyes are the uh, blood red right there, and that was, uh, I think, really popping. I, I really wanted to do a whole miniature just like this in blood red, just to see how it looks, but I haven't been able to yet. Hardened leather is that darker um, brown right there for the uh, pistol holster, and then of course magic blue, we already covered that. And it's cool how it does that that depth, you know, because you have that lighter white airbrush and then you got that darker stuff there. It really pops it. Grim black uh, for just going back over the metals and getting these uh, joints back here and then in the, the vents right there. I think that really, that's why I wasn't too worried about it. And then pallid bone um, was what I used on this right here. And again, you know, didn't do any work on that. No lines, no nothing. Just hit, the, hit it with pallid bone and good to go. Actually, I might have forgot to do, is there? Yeah, there is a purity seal in there. Oops, I missed that one. So uh, no big deal, you can't even see it. So if, if you can't see it, it's not worth painting, right? So that's pretty much knocks it all out. Um, like I said, this guy's gonna take about 30 minutes to paint just because you have to get in there and you have to do all the trim work and everything because it's a Space Marine. But in our other tutorial we're gonna do that we've already filmed, we paint up uh, Captain America and there's no metal on this. It's just straight, you know, you get it to that pre-shade that that values highlight and you're good to go. So you just block it all out and done. This guy takes about 10 to 15 minutes to paint uh, to get to look like that. And again, there's no brushwork. None of that is a line that was painted on with a brush. It's pretty crazy um, how 
actually crisp. And I was learning the speed paint a little bit when I painted his pants and I actually had too much on my, my on my brush. So be careful with that. Unfortunately, I started on the back and it's uh, not very super noticeable, but yeah, that can definitely happen too. So something like this with no metals and no actual base coat component to it, it's gonna take a lot less time than a Space Marine. But when you can actually paint a Space Marine in 20 to 30 minutes to that level, you know, doing the 40 to 50 that you might need for a squad is actually very much in a realm for possibility to get done in a whole weekend, which is just completely bonkers in my opinion. So I think overall, whether you pick up the complete mega paint set, which should be out by the time this video drops, hopefully, um, or you just get the starter set that has, you know, the basic colors. It does not come with a black. It comes with that gray, um, the Grave, Grave Lord gray, which I actually haven't tried out yet, unfortunately. So I can't tell you how, how cool that is. You can look at, um, Goobertown Hobbies video. He did a really great video. He used all the paints. He used multiple coats, letting them dry six to eight hours in between and knocked it out of the park. And you can see exactly what the, these colors will look like over pretty much every conceivable base coat that you would use and also metals. It's a great video. Definitely check it out if you have a specific color shading question. And don't forget, you can always just hit it with the Army Painter, the normal white primer, boom, and then go right to town with your speed paint. Or, you know, if you want to do all the things in the, the values highlighting and the airbrushing and working it up, you know, with the, the, the techniques that we showed you here, um, you can do that too. And I feel like it definitely creates a very, very uh, stark and realistic, um, I, I would say higher than tabletop quality. This is probably the best Space Marine I've ever painted. And it literally took me the least amount of time of any Space Marine I have ever painted. It's, it's insane. And then top it off with a little gamer's grass base and you're off to the races in like no time flat for uh, a Space Marine army here uh, in this new era of hobby and I suppose. So that's it for this one. Make sure you check out the Mega Mega Paint Speed Paint Mega Set or the starter set from, of course, you can get it from army, thearmypainter.com, but they want you to buy it from your local game store. Of course, you can find it online as well. Whatever floats your hobby boat and you know, always remember to vote with your hobby dollars. If you liked that video feature, consider supporting us over at patreon.com and get back in the mail each month a miniature crate full of some of the stuff we review here as well as some of the top 3D artist designs out there too to help support what they're doing. Plus, discount coupon codes from some of those same manufacturers. They're yours to keep whether you cancel or stay on. Just it's totally up to you. Obviously, we want to keep you as happy as possible. So check it out over at patreon.com forward slash spikybits.